Hello, and welcome to this Learn English Elementary recording brought to you by the British Council. To find out more and to access language activities and audio scripts, visit our Learn English website at www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learn English. Hello, and welcome to the second series of the Learn English Elementary podcast. This is podcast number one. If you listen to the first series, you'll remember, I hope, that my name's Ravi. And I'm Tess. Yes, we're back again. I hope you didn't miss us too much. We've had a little break. Did you go anywhere nice, Ravi? No. And now we're back with more good stuff for you to listen to. We've got... Uh, aren't you going to tell them, Tess? I'll tell them if you don't. We've chosen a special day to come back. It's Tessie's birthday today, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Are you doing anything special? Well, I'm going out for dinner with some friends tonight and then we might go to a club. I'm not really sure. Sounds good. Where are you going to eat? Is it somewhere a bit special or...? Yeah, it's a French place. I've heard it's really good, but I haven't been there. I'm sure it'll be great. Any good presents? Well, I got some money from my mum and dad to buy myself something nice, so I'm going to get some new boots with that, and that's it. So far. Well, I'll get you a coffee when we finish here, OK? OK. And a cake? No, go on then. A small one. Yes. But let's get on with it. What have we got today? We've got our quiz, then we've got people telling us about their favourite food. And Carolina's back again. Right. If you're listening and you don't remember Carolina, she's a student from Venezuela who's come to Britain to study, and we follow her in every podcast to hear how she's getting on. But to start with, we've got something new. This section is called I'd Like to Talk About. In every podcast, we'll talk to someone who wants to tell us about something that they're interested in. It could be anything. A hobby, a person, a place, a thing. Something that you know a bit about and would like to share with Ravi and me. <laughs> and all our listeners, of course. And to start us off with, I'd like to talk about... We've got Esther here with us. Esther, hello. Good morning. Hi, Esther. Welcome to the podcast. You're a student, aren't you? Hello, Ravi. Yes, that's right. Here in London? What are you studying? Yeah, at chemistry. I'm doing a master's. Blimey. Is that what you're going to tell us about? I'm lost already. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'd like to talk about knitting. Knitting? Yeah, knitting. It's really popular nowadays, you know. Lots of young people are doing it. There's a university knitting club that I'm in. But why do people want to knit? Oh, to make things, Ravi. To make things to wear. You're wearing a jumper. It's made of wool. Well, it's knitted, isn't it? You get the wool from a sheep and you knit a jumper. Or, or socks. Or a scarf. OK, OK, OK. Don't go crazy. It was a stupid question. Sorry, Esther. That's OK. But, you know, there are some men in our knitting club too. And some of them are really good at it. Knitting's really quite fashionable now. There are celebrity knitters and everything. Yeah? Yeah. There's Madonna and um, Julia Roberts and Uma Thurman. Lots of people. And, of course, nowadays people are more worried about the environment and trying to recycle things. And so knitting's perfect. Mm. You can take an old jumper that you don't like anymore and make something new. It's a cheap way to get clothes. Good point. Do you know anything about the history of knitting, Esther? Uh, when did it start? Not really. Some people say that it started with people making nets, you know, for catching fish or animals. Mm. But nobody knows for sure. I saw a pair of socks once in a museum. They were from Egypt. About a thousand years old, I think. They were beautiful, really complicated. But that's the oldest thing I know. That's interesting. Remember that they didn't have machines for knitting till the 19th century, so everything was done by hand, even clothes for kings and queens. Oh. In England, it was always men that knitted for the rich people. They had to do six years' training to become master knitters. Six years? So women didn't knit? Well, poor women did, of course. 
In fact, the whole family used to knit, the fathers and the children too, making socks and things that they could sell to make money. Did you make that jumper you're wearing? Yes, I did. It's really nice. Thank you. It took me ages. I could never make something like that. You could. You have to practice, but it's not that difficult.、Mm. That's another thing I like about knitting. When you start, you can just do kind of simple things like scarves and stuff. And then when you get a bit better at it, you can make more difficult things like this. Well, that's great. Thanks very much, Esther. Really interesting. Thank you. Ravi, what do you think? Want to start knitting?、Hmm, maybe. Hey, Tess, what do you get if you cross a sheep with a kangaroo?、Hmm, a father sheep and a mother kangaroo, or the other way round? I, I don't know. It doesn't matter, Tess. Look, the joke's just what do you get if you cross a sheep with a kangaroo? Go on. A woolly jumper. Oh, you've been waiting to say that, haven't you? Yeah. Well, Esther is going to give us some knitting pictures and links to put up on the site if you want to find out more. You enjoyed that, didn't you? Why don't you try and knit something? I could, couldn't I? I could make you a scarf for your birthday. When is your birthday? Is it in June? Yeah, the fifteenth. You've got plenty of time if you start now. Ho ho! Oh, I forgot to say, listeners. If you want to write something or record something, you can send it to us at learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil dot org. That's learnenglishpodcast or one word at britishcouncil or one word dot org. That's o r g. Like I said, it can be whatever you want—a hobby, a person, anything. Or just tell us if you like knitting. Send it to us, and we'll put the best answers on the site. Okay, time now to go to the phone to talk to today's quiz contestant, who is Mark from Nottingham. Hello, Mark.、Uh, no. Uh, okay. Hello. Mark. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, Ravi. What are you up to today? Oh, nothing special. It's my day off, so I'm not doing very much. What do you do? I work in a clothes shop in Nottingham. Ah, okay. It's not Paul Smith, is it? He's from Nottingham, isn't he? Great designer. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not Paul Smith. He is from Nottingham, though. No, I work in a small clothes shop in the centre of town. Do you like it? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's good. Great. Right, we're going to play hot seat, okay? Tess. Yes. So you're going to play with Ravi today, Mark. I'm going to give Ravi some words. He doesn't know what they are, and he's going to try to explain them so that you can guess the words. All right? Okay. And we'll see how many you can get in one minute. Oh, and the other thing is, all the words are connected. This time, the connection is people in your life. Uh, let's do one to practice. So, for example, if I say、um, it's your father's brother or your mother's brother, who is it?、Uh, uncle. Right, you've got the idea. Are you ready to go? Ready. Okay then. Ready, Ravi? Mhm.、Mm、let's start. Here are the words. You've got one minute, starting from now. Right.、Um, the person who lives next door to you,、um, in in the house next to yours. Neighbour. Next door neighbour. Neighbour. Yes.、Um, your,、uh, your brother's daughter or or your sister's daughter. It's your a nephew. I mean niece. Niece. Yes, niece.、Uh, someone in the same. No.、Uh, someone who goes to the same school as you and their pupil. No. They've got the same teacher as you, and you sit next to them or something.、Uh, they're your. Classmate. Yes, phew.、Uh, I couldn't say class. Um, come on then. If you're married, this is like your wife's dad. Father-in-law. Okay.、Uh, next one. Someone who you work with, like like Tess, is my friend. No. Well, yes, but but that's not what I mean. We work together, so we're. Um, I don't know. We. Oh, colleagues. Golly, yes.、Uh, how's the time? Um, oh,、uh, this person is another word for manager. The person who's in charge at work is your boss. Yes, boss.、Uh, your uncle's children are your cousins. Yes. Okay, I'll give you that one. Whew. 
That was really stressful. Well done, Mark. How many is that, Tess? Um, neighbour, niece, classmate, father-in-law, colleague, boss and cousin. Seven. Well done, Mark. And Ravi. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and thanks for playing. We'll send you a book token and anything else we can find lying around the studio. Thanks, Mark. Right. We've got more to come. We'll hear what some of our listeners say about their favourite food. And we'll catch up with Carolina again after this. You are listening to a Learn English Elementary recording brought to you by the British Council. To find out about our terms and conditions, visit our website at www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learn English. Now we can move on to your turn. This is the part of the podcast when we go out and ask different people what they think about something. We ask a different question in every podcast. And this time the question was, which country's food is your favourite? And of course, why? OK, let's hear what people said. Uh, that would be Vietnamese food, especially southern Vietnamese food around the city of Ho Chi Minh. I've uh, been there many times and each time I go there, my friends will bring me to a restaurant where they serve food that, has, uh, that was uh, cooked with a lot of rich ingredients such as lemongrass, uh, herbs, pepper, and they put in lots of different types of seafood. So I think that's a lot of uh, effort put in to cook up such a dish. So I actually like Vietnamese food uh, very much. And uh, in addition, I think the food there is very healthy. Uh, they don't use a lot of oil. They use a lot of uh, natural ingredients such as uh, herbs and also fish sauce. So what comes out of that is a lot of... Uh, flavors of seafood plus herbs, which I like very much. Um, well, I live in Italy at the moment, so I'm very fond of Italian food. But really, if I had to choose, I would say Indian or Thai food because I like spicy food. My favorite food is food from Italy because I really like pasta and I really like tomato sauce and, um, and olive oil. And I also like wine and the wine from Italy is very good. Oh, I think I'd have to say France, because uh, French cooking is superb. So much variety, and, and they just take it so seriously. I'm going to say two countries. Uh, maybe Italy, from Europe, because I really, really like pizza and uh, the, the different types of pasta they have there. But probably my real favourite type of food comes from Mexico, which uh, I, I just enjoy everything I've ever tried from Mexico. It's always a little bit spicy, maybe a little bit heavy, um, but really, really good food. Uh, I think Thai food, because it's I like spicy food and it's really kind of fresh as well. Lots of interesting different tastes. Mmm. So what's your favourite food, Tess? I bet it's French. No. Why? Why French? You're going to a French restaurant for your birthday, aren't you? Well, yeah, but I'm not sure it's my favourite. Oh, I don't know. It's a difficult one. Maybe Italian? I mean, good Italian, not just fast food pizzas. What about you? No contest. Indian every time. I'm a traditional boy about food. But I love fast food pizzas as well. All fast food, actually. <laughs> But now it's time to find out what's happening to Carolina. If you listen to the first series of the podcast, you'll know that Carolina is from Venezuela and she's just started a course at Newcastle University in Britain. Yes, in every podcast we hear what Carolina's been doing. She's already met a lot of people in Newcastle. She shares a flat with her friend Emily and some other students. And her special friend is a guy called Jamie. Yes. Tess likes Jamie. Thank you, Ravi. Now let's hear about Carolina. So I told Emily that she... Oh, wait a minute. They're nice. Which ones? Those boots? No, those shoes at the back. The red ones. Let's go in and have a look. OK. Yeah. 
Here they are. They're beautiful. What size are they? Um, five and a half. What does that mean? I'm a 36 in Venezuela. Yeah, British sizes are different. Try them on. Oh, okay. See if they fit. No, they're too big. So try a five. That's the next size down. Oh. Uh, excuse me. Have you got these in a five? Uh, the red ones? Mm hmm Oh, no, sorry. We've only got the sizes on the shelf. Oh. Okay, thanks. Bad luck. Come on, let's go to that other shop in the high street. They might have them. Okay, but you know, I really do need some shoes. Mm -hmm. If we're going to stay with your parents, I need to look nice. I don't think they'll care what shoes you're wearing. You know what I mean. Let's have a look in here. Okay. What about these red ones? Oh, they're horrible. And they're too high. I can't wear very high heels. I can't walk. Mm. Those brown ones, then? They're nice. Oh, no, I don't want brown. I haven't got any brown clothes. Mm. Oh, these black ones, then? They're a size five. Hmm. They're quite nice. How much are they? Oh, 95 pounds. 95 pounds? Mm. I'm not paying 95 pounds for a pair of shoes. No, let's go somewhere else. Come on, Jamie. But if you like them, why don't you, you know, try them on and see? So, what exactly do you want? What colour? I don't know exactly, but I'll know when I see them. Here's another shop. <sighs> Come on. Ooh, now these are nice. Black, not too high, and not too expensive. Why don't you try them on? Oh, wait a minute. They've got them in grey, too. Maybe they're nicer. What do you think? Try them both on. Excuse me? Have you got these in a size 5? In a 5? In black or grey? Uh, I'd like to try both of them, please. I'll just go and check. Phew. Oh, let's sit down. Yes. Shoe shops make me tired. <clears throat> so, which ones do you like best? The grey ones or the black ones? They're both nice. But tell me which ones you like best. Okay, then. Um, the grey ones. What's wrong with the black ones? Nothing's wrong with the black ones. I said I like them both. Oh, I think I prefer the black ones. Okay. If I say I prefer the black ones, can we just buy them and get out of here? Mm, yes, I think I'll get the black ones. Do you like them? Or do you prefer the grey ones? Oh! Excuse me? Yes? I'll take these, please. Are the black ones? Yes, the black ones. Now, where do I pay? I'm over here, love. Come on, Jamie. Why are you being so difficult today? <sighs> Poor old Jamie. I think he was a bit bored. Do you like buying shoes, Tess? Well, yes, I do. I like shoes. Don't you? Well, yes, of course I do, but usually I know what shoes I want and I go to the shop and I buy them. I don't go around lots of shops trying them on. I think men and women are different about shoes. OK, I won't say any more. I don't want to upset anybody. Good. Anyway, did you hear Carolina say that they're going to visit Jamie's parents? Yes. So? So what? So, they must be together. You know, a couple. Well, yes. Men don't go to shoe shops with women if they're not serious. Oh, don't start the shoe thing again. Sorry. So, that's the end of this podcast. You might remember in series one, we always finished with a joke from Gordon. Well, Gordon isn't with us anymore. He's got a new job. Yes, and we hope everything goes well for him. Hey, Tess. I've got a little surprise for you. Really? Here you are. A happy birthday. Oh, thank you. What is it? Well, open it and see. <laughs> oh, a French cookery book. Thank you, Ravi. That's really great. Well, I thought French food was your favourite. 
But now... Oh, uh... silly, I love French food and I love cooking. It's a lovely present, thank you. Come here. Mwah! Oh. <laughs> so, do you want to say the last bit, birthday girl, before we go and get that cake? OK. Well, that's the end of our part of the podcast. And remember, the address for anything that you want to send us is learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil.org. In a moment, you can listen to Tom, our English teacher. He's going to talk about some of the language you heard in this podcast and things to help you learn. So, stay around to listen to Tom, but we'll say goodbye for now. Bye! Bye. You are listening to a Learn English elementary recording brought to you by the British Council. To find out more and to access language activities and audio scripts, visit our Learn English website at www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learn English. Hi, I'm Tom. At the end of every podcast, you'll hear from me. I'm going to talk about some of the language you heard in the programmes and talk about ways to help you learn English. The first thing I want to talk about is the word one. Listen to Ravi at the beginning of the podcast. Hello, and welcome to the second series of the Learn English Elementary podcast. This is podcast number one. OK, no problem there. Ravi says this is podcast number one. He uses one as a number. One, two, three, four, five, etc. Now listen to Tess and Ravi. Listen for one. Well, I'll get you a coffee when we finish here, OK? OK. And a cake? No, go on then. A small one. One isn't a number here. Ravi isn't saying a small one, a small two. One here is a pronoun. It's used in place of a noun, a thing. Listen again. What does one refer to? Well, I'll get you a coffee when we finish here, OK? OK. And a cake? No, go on then. A small one. Yes, that's right. One refers to the cake. Ravi doesn't repeat the word cake. He uses one instead. Tess said cake, so Ravi doesn't need to say it again. They both know what they're talking about. So he can use one. We do this a lot in English. We can also use ones when we're talking about something that's plural. Listen to Jamie and Carolina in the shoe shop. What does ones refer to? So, which ones do you like best? The grey ones or the black ones? They're both nice. But tell me which ones you like best. OK, then. Um, the grey ones. What's wrong with the black ones? Nothing's wrong with the black ones. I said I like them both. Yes, they both use ones to refer to the shoes. Shoes is plural, so they use ones, not one. They can use ones because they're standing in the shoe shop looking at the shoes, and so they both know what they're talking about. In some languages, you can make adjectives plural. You can say, I like the blacks, or I prefer the greys. But you can't do that in English. We say, I like the black ones, or I prefer the grey ones. One is very common with this or that. We can say, do you prefer this one or that one? And, of course, we use it a lot with which. Which one do you like best? Or which ones do you prefer? Or, for example, in a car park with a friend, we can ask, which one is yours? We both know that we're talking about a car. And if you're eating chocolates, you can say to a friend, would you like one? There are lots of words in English that we use to refer to things or people. Words like it or her or them or mine, pronouns. Also, words like this or that or these or those. Listen to Tess talking to Esther about knitting. 
Notice the words that refer to other people or things. Did you make that jumper you're wearing? Yes, I did. It's really nice. Thank you. It took me ages. I could never make something like that. It's important that you notice these words when you're listening or reading and that you know what they refer to. If you don't, then you won't be able to understand exactly what people are talking about. A good way to practice this is to take a piece of English, for example, a part of the tape script of the podcast, and draw a circle around all the words that refer to something else. Then draw a line from the word to the thing that it refers to. So, for example, you draw a circle around the word him and then draw a line to connect him to what it refers to. Maybe John or Ravi. I'll put an example on the site for you to see, if you don't understand what I mean. But please try it. It really will help you to understand things better. Now I'd like to talk about something different. Listen to this. What does poor mean? So, women didn't knit. Well, poor women did, of course. Yes, poor means someone who hasn't got very much money. It's the opposite of rich. Now listen to this. What does old mean? You can take an old jumper that you don't like anymore and make something new. It's a cheap way to get clothes. Right again. An old jumper is a jumper that you've had for a long time. It's the opposite of new. But now listen to what Ravi says after he listens to Carolina and Jamie in the shoe shop. Poor old Jamie. I think he was a bit bored. It's interesting, isn't it? Poor old Jamie. Ravi doesn't mean that Jamie hasn't got any money. And he doesn't mean that Jamie is old. He's a young man. Ravi uses poor because he feels sorry for Jamie because he was bored in the shoe shop. We use poor in this way a lot to show sympathy. You can say, look at that poor dog, it's hungry. Or, poor Susan hates her new job. You can use poor in formal or informal situations. But Ravi says, poor old Jamie. The old makes it more informal. You would only say it to friends or people that you know well. If a friend has a problem, you can say, Oh, poor you! or Oh, poor old you! to show that you sympathise, that you feel sorry for them. And sometimes we say, You poor thing! or You poor old thing! too. See if you notice it in any English films or songs that you listen to. And now for a simple phrase that you can use this week. Listen to Tess at the end of the quiz. Um, neighbour, niece, classmate, father-in-law, colleague, boss and cousin. Seven. Well done, Mark. And Ravi. She says, well done, Mark because he got seven words in the quiz. We say, well done, when someone does something well, when we want to congratulate them. Use it this week when you're speaking English. Say, well done, to someone. OK, I'm going to stop there. I'll talk to you all again next time. Remember, you can write to me about any language that you noticed in this podcast. The address is learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil.org. In a moment, you'll hear the address for the website where you can read everything you've heard in this podcast. You can also find some practice exercises to do online and a support pack that you can print. Right, that's all for this time. Bye for now. See you next time. This recording was brought to you by the British Council. If you enjoyed this elementary podcast, you might like to listen to previous episodes. You can also listen to our other Learn English podcasts, such as themes, stories and poems, 
and professional English. You can access these on our website at www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learn English.